Exploring the depths of the ocean is a little bit like reflecting on our own minds. It's for three minutes and then the scary stuff arrives. But if you're still interested in taking a look at all the nightmares the ocean holds, this, uh, this is the video for you, my friends. From a super villainy fish to a nightmarish looking thing, let's meet the 20 most terrible deep sea creatures you've never seen before. Number 20, Asian Sheep's Head Wrasse. Even before you know what this animal is, the name just makes you think, I don't trust it. Turns out the Asian sheep's head wrasse also goes by a different and slightly less super villainy name, the Kobudai. Full spoiler warning, it... fishermen often catch these weird-looking fish entirely by accident. But don't worry, humans are not at any risk. In fact, the kobu dai exists purely on a diet of mollusks and crustaceans, usually found in shallow, rocky habitats or wrecks. So humans are very much free to go about their business, although of course you're gonna get a shock when you see that face. Did I mention that they're also one of the largest known wrasses on Earth, because why not add a little more nightmare to the fire? I'm sure there's an evolutionary reason that deep sea creatures are, by and large, terrifying to look at, but for now, I'm just gonna assume that the universe has a sense of humor I don't fully understand. Actually, it scares me a little. I'm scared of nature. It's time for the rare topic. What on Earth are we looking at? I have no idea. Marine biologist Hank Shaw was fishing off the Pacific Northwest recently and pulled out what he called a mutant, alien-like, toothy fish. He took a photo, posted it on Twitter, and nobody had any idea what the hell it was. Scientists are baffled by the find, which raises the question, do you think there are more unusual and weird animals in the depths of the ocean just waiting to be discovered? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your thoughts with that said let's keep things moving number 19 fang tooth fish kids can be cruel but as far as i can tell kids did not name the fang tooth fish which means it's the scientists that are really the cruel ones well i didn't think i was going to announce a scandal today but here we are the fang tooth is a deep sea fish found in tropical and cold temperate waters and can you guess how they got their name if you can't you might need to get your brain looked at obviously the fang tooth is named for the huge fang like teeth but it turns out they're not anywhere near as threatening as their name may suggest. In fact, fangtooths are small and harmless to humans. The biggest species reaches just 6.3 inches long, while the shortest is less than half that. So you don't have to worry about losing an arm or a leg with one of these guys. Still, when you see a fish that looks like this, it's probably best to get swimming in the other direction. Deep sea creatures are uh, a little bit volatile given the lack of social interaction and sunlight. It's kind of depressing how relatable that is for everyone that suffered through 2020. Number 18, Vampire Squid. Underwater Dracula is a movie idea that I've been working on for some time, but this is not that story, sadly. As far as I can tell, the vampire squid cannot transform into a bat, nor does it have an aversion to garlic, but it looks like a vampire. The vampire squid's proper name is Vampirotuthis infernalis, which literally translates to vampire squid from hell. My research was unable to conclusively prove whether or not the 
creature did, in fact, originate from hell, but I have credible reason to believe that it did. Actually, that vampire squid doesn't really have any traits relating to vampires. They don't fly, they don't suck blood, they have no opinion on sunlight. Scientists simply named the vampire squid based entirely on its coloring and cloak-like webbing, proving once again that even scientists don't have to be original. While you may not be in any serious, life-threatening danger from a vampire squid, it's still not a creature you would want to bump into in the depths of the ocean. Then again, if you were in the depths of the ocean, you probably don't want to bump into any living thing. Number 17. Japanese Spider Crab Welcome to Japan, home of delicious food, beloved cartoons, and the world's largest legged anthropod. Did anyone ask for that last one? Nope, but you're getting it, and you're gonna like it. Unless you don't, in which case, join the club. The Japanese spider crab is a marine crab found in the waters all around Japan, and it's mostly known for its impressive leg span. It's the largest of any anthropod on Earth. Japan, of course, is very proud of that accomplishment and celebrated it, as anybody would, they turned the Japanese spider crab into a delicacy. Because why not have the world's most celebrated crab sticks? Thankfully, the Japanese government isn't completely insane and is working to protect and conserve the Japanese spider crab. Apparently, they saw what happened in the US with the Rick and Morty Chezwan saw shortage and are doing anything to avoid a crab riot. The Japanese spider crab is probably the most sought after crab in the country by fishermen, but it can be pretty tricky. The crabs like to hide out in veins and holes in the deeper parts of the oceans, making this one of the toughest games of hide and seek in the world. Number 16. Goblin Shark Come on now, it's not like it's called the Koala Shark or something. With a name like Goblin Shark, you have to expect that it's going to be something truly nightmarish. Well, my friends, I'm here to confirm that, yes, it's one of the freakiest fish in the world. The Goblin Shark is often described as a living fossil, and not just because it looks like a bag of bones brought to life. The Goblin Shark is the only living representative of the family, Mitsukarinidae, a group of animals over 125 million years old. When fully grown, the goblin shark can reach between 10 and 13 feet long, but some have been measured as growing up to 20 feet long. Yeah, that's right, they are substantially larger than you. Let the nightmares commence, my friends. Rest assured, you're not likely to see a goblin shark in any shallow waters. In fact, they're usually found at depths greater than 300 and 30 feet, with some diving as deep as 4,270 feet. So, unless your body can withstand an unbelievable amount of underwater pressure, you probably won't bump into one. So, that's good news. The bad news is you'll definitely see this guy in your nightmares. I apologize in advance for that. Number 15. Atlantic Wolffish are you a hard-bodied or spiny invertebrate? I'm going to guess no, but I like to be inclusive. If the answer was yes, you might want to prepare yourself, because we're going to meet somebody who really, really wants to eat you. The Atlantic Wolffish. This fish is one of the ocean's most voracious predators. And yes, they will do anything to ensure they can eat sea urchins, crabs, snails, or any other crunchy invertebrate. The Atlantic wolffish is usually a solitary creature, but they're known to form pairs during the breeding season. And given that the fish can reach lengths of up to five feet, that makes a combined 10-foot-long power couple, and that sounds like a pretty horrible nightmare for any creature without bones. But it's good news for fishers who proudly celebrate any and all Atlantic wolf fish catches. Today, ecologists consider this fish to be an important species in the North Atlantic Ocean, responsible for regulating the populations of local invertebrates. But the population numbers are falling rapidly. Those experts are now calling on the planet to do more conservation work for these fascinating creatures. Maybe if they called it the Atlantic Mick Wolf Fish, people would be more willing to step in and protect them.
Number 14. Hagfish Slimy, eel-like, jawless, I'll be the first to admit that the hagfish sounds pretty freaking gross. But hey, this isn't a list of adorable and wonderful sea creatures, you know? You have to expect a little grossness now and then. And make no mistake, the hagfish, definitely gross. This is the only known living animal on Earth to have a skull but no vertebral column. So I guess you could argue that they're basically just a swimming head, which is maybe even freakier sounding. In fact, they've always been like this. According to studies, the hagfish that lives in our waters today are pretty much the same as they were over 300 million years ago. Yep, this is a dinosaur-aged fish. Weird, right? In fact, experts have really struggled when it comes to classifying hagfish. The problem? Nobody can agree on why the creature doesn't have a spine. Science eventually came to the rescue, proving through DNA that the hagfish had lost its vertebrae through evolution, as opposed to preceding the evolution of the vertebral column. Either way, a spineless fish is a lot more frightening than it sounds. This isn't some swimmer that can't stand up for itself. It's basically a slimy, floating head. Number 13. Giant Squid Pretty much any deep sea creature with the word giant in its name is something you don't want to encounter, but the giant squid is especially weird. There's just something about the slinky, slimy nature of the animal that is strangely unsettling. Just wait until you see how big it can get. Thanks to an evolutionary trait known as deep sea gigantism, the giant squid can grow to an unthinkably large size. Specifically, the maximum length of a giant squid has been estimated at between 39 and 43 feet long for females and 33 feet for males. And those are just the ones we know about. There have long been some rumors and claims that people have found giant squid measuring over 66 feet. They haven't been verified, of course, but sometimes it's just nice to believe the weird stuff you read on the internet. Deep sea creatures are, by and large, some of the weirdest looking things things on Earth. But to see a squid reaching over 40 feet long, well, that's just straight out of the deep sea nightmare world that none of us ever want to dive into. Number 12. Grenadiers Grenadier seems like a pretty strange name for a fish, but when you find out that they're also known as rat tails, it sounds pretty good, actually. And in fact, if you ever happen to be exploring the deeper ends of the ocean, you'll probably see one of these. The grenadier is usually found in the deep depths of the world's oceans, from the Arctic to the Antarctic. And did I mention they're among the most plentiful of the deep sea fish on the planet. Yeah, that's true. In fact, they're believed to make up to 15% of the entire deep sea fish population, which is great news for anybody interested in seeing a weird rat-like fish in the deepest depths of the ocean, and it has absolutely no impact on just about everyone else on the planet. So that's fun for us, right? Okay, so the name Grenadiers isn't really relevant to anything, but look, it's still a deep sea fish that you really don't want to encounter because, well, who wants to encounter a deep sea fish with a rat tail? Most people don't want to encounter a land fish with a rat tail. Oh, uh, a land fish is what I'm calling mammals now. Oh, I've been asked to stop, okay. Uh, forget I ever said the land fish thing. Number 11, Chimera. When it comes to deep sea animals, they're all pretty freaky looking, which makes this next sentence pretty alarming. You ready? Okay. The chimera exists in every ocean except the Arctic and Antarctic. Let's explain why that's kinda scary, shall we? The chimera is a deep sea fish, usually found as deep as 8,500 feet underwater. They grow up to 4.9 feet long, and their skeleton is exclusively constructed of cartilage. 
That's right, cartilage, as in connective tissue, connected to what, you may be asking? More cartilage. Their long, soft bodies are covered with smooth, naked skin that gives them a murky, dark coloring. And yes, most of them have a venomous spine in front of the dorsal fin, because what deep sea creature is complete without some kind of threat attached to their body? So yeah, this bizarre little guy can be found in pretty much every ocean in the world. The good news is that most of them live at those extreme depths. The bad news is that some of them can be found at fairly shallow depths, hence why you should be alarmed by their existence. Because if you're gonna die, you don't want it to be from a fish almost entirely made up of connective tissue. Number 10. Sarcastic Fringe Head Apparently the fact that this fish shares my high school nickname is nothing more than a coincidence. Or so they claim. The sarcastic fringe head is a small, tough saltwater fish that have some truly bizarre customs. Don't believe me? Let's prove it. The sarcastic fringe head is known for its large mouth and aggressive territorial behavior. Suppose another fish happens to trespass on their area. In that case, the fringe head will lash out violently in the only way it knows how. Kissing. Yeah, my friends, this fish has found a way to weaponize love. When two fringe heads get into a fight, they press their mouths together as if in the middle of a steamy makeout session. But no, they're actually just fighting for dominance, which is a questionable excuse at best. They're found in the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of North America. But if for some weird reason you do want to see two fish angrily making out, you better be prepared to dive 10 to 220 feet below the surface. I'm not entirely sure why these fish think kissing is a great way to establish dominance, but who am I to judge? I say let the fish do whatever they want want to do. I'm more concerned about the humans that want to watch them kiss. Number 9. The Barrel Eye I really was not kidding when I said that deep sea creatures were weird. My friends were about to meet one of the freakiest animals under the sea. Yeah, even weirder than a singing OCD mermaid with a human fixation. This is the barrel eye, also known as a spook fish. The barrel eye is a small, deep sea Argentiniform fish found in waters in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. And why are they called barrel eyes? Because of their barrel eyes? I don't even know why you had to ask that question. These fish fish have two barrel-shaped, tubular eyes that are usually directed straight up, allowing the fish to detect the silhouettes of prey above them. But if they need to, the barrel eye can also position their eyes to face forward, which is probably more helpful given that predators tend to come from all directions. The barrel eye is definitely one of nature's more unique and creative developments. In fact, it's kinda like someone made a DIY fish. Now there's a craft project for all you creative people out there, you can create an all new species of fish. You're probably ready to start your own universe. How hard can it really be? Number 8. The Faceless Cusk Eel I haven't even told you a thing about this animal, and yet the name just tells you it's gonna be weird. The Faceless Cusk Eel. It sounds like some kind of Indiana Jones parody title. Actually, I would pay to see him taking on the Faceless Cusk Eel. This species of eel can be found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans at depths of between 12,910 and 16,732 feet. Or in more relatable human terms, absolutely absolutely no way take me back to shore and leave me alone, the fish is named because of its unique appearance. Namely, the fact that its face is straight up bizarre to look at, the mouth is on the underside of the head, and there are no eyes on the side of the head, the nostrils are near the front of the mouth. It's all very strange. Actually, for clarification, the faceless cusk does have eyes, they're buried deep beneath the skin, so that's unsettling. 
The faceless cusk is undeniably one of the stranger animals in our world. I mean, how many creatures just walk around without a face and without drinking alcohol that's just totally and completely wild. But hey, I'm not gonna argue with a faceless cusk. Well, maybe I will, but not while we're recording. Number 7. The Blobfish you know them, you love them. The blobfish is one of the world's most iconic and ugly animals. And for a good reason, the thing looks like a big mess of abandoned slime that somehow grew a face. It's absolutely terrifying. This deep sea fish inhabits the waters off the coast of Australia and New Zealand, and he's clearly happy about it. Even though the close-up photos may suggest otherwise, the blobfish is actually pretty tiny. They generally measure less than 12 inches long and are always described as nothing more than a gelatinous mass, which is a description many of us can relate to. In fact, the gelatinous and jiggly nature of the fish works to the blobfish's advantage. The lack of density allows the fish to float without spending all that energy on swimming or any other useless exercise that all those underwater chump fish like to do. And don't worry about the blobfish not being intimidating. As a predator, the blobfish is pretty unthreatening. That's mostly because it tends to feed on the edible matter that floats in front of it, like crustaceans. So there's no need for them to be particularly threatening or intimidating. They just chow down on whatever they find. Again, this is alarmingly relatable. Number 6. The High Fin Lizardfish at a certain point, it becomes difficult to figure out which animals are made up and which animals are legitimate. But I can assure you the high fin lizardfish is nowhere near as fake as it may sound. In fact, they're pretty terrifying and that's not even an overreaction. The Bathysauridae, as they're officially known, is a small family of deep water fish that are generally recognized by their flat heads and curved barbed teeth. They tend to measure up to 31 inches in length, but let's get into why exactly they're so frightening. They may be small and a little weird looking, but these animals are one of the world's deepest living apex predators. Yep, an apex predator. In fact, experts have highlighted that the lizard fish is more than willing to eat literally anything it happens to encounter in the wild, including another lizard fish. Now, that is scary. Of course, humans aren't in any immediate danger because we don't live 5,000 feet below the water, but consider this a warning to any curious diver who finds a way to reach that depth without immediately dying. The lizard fish will absolutely eat you, and the world will react with a resounding, what did he expect? Number 5. The Anglerfish the deep sea is kind of like a bad neighborhood. Once you go down there, you're probably not going to get out in one piece. And if you do, you're going to struggle with PTSD for the rest of your life. And yes, in this case, the metaphorical bad neighborhood is basically the Wild West. The anglerfish is one of the most terrifying creatures in all of the deep sea. This nightmarish and bony creation has a very unique way of hunting. While other fish may be content to simply hunt down fish, and, you know, eat it. The anglerfish thinks of itself as a fisherfish. Using a modified luminescent fin ray, the anglerfish lures other fish to their doom, catching their prey on their own terms and enjoying a delicious meal in the process. It's delightfully devilish or truly our worst nightmare, depending on your point of view. The anglerfish can be found worldwide, but most people won't get anywhere near deep enough to actually see one for themselves, which is probably a blessing because in the deep, dark depths of the ocean, would you want to see this weird, bony thing luring you to potential death? No thanks, I'll just enjoy my Wendy's. Number 4. The Slender Snipe Eel with a name like that, this creature must be one of the most beautiful, elegant animals alive. If you honestly thought that, I have a bridge to sell you. Deep sea animals are never elegant or beautiful, and this one is no exception. The slender snipe eel is unique in that it only weighs a few ounces, but it measures up to five feet long. Its unusual features include a bird-like beak covered with tiny, hooked teeth used to catch and chow down on shrimp 
shrimp, and crustaceans. Basically, it's one of the trippiest and weirdest animals in the depths of the ocean, but then you've kind of come to expect that kind of thing by now. If you're here looking for some useless trivia for your next quiz night, the slender snipe eel has more vertebrae in its backbone than any other animal on Earth. 750. Unfortunately, evolution has also moved its anus around to its throat, so you win some, you lose some. But if you ignore the unfortunate fact that it literally talks poop, this is a weird animal. Actually, why are we ignoring that? That's the weirdest thing of all. Number three, viperfish. The viperfish is one of the few animal species on this list that is more of a group than an individual. A viperfish is any species of fish in the genus Chaliotis, which is relevant because they're all pure nightmare fuel, and that's no understatement. Your average viperfish can expect to grow anywhere between 12 and 23.5 inches long, but they can be hard to track down. In the daytime, they tend to linger in the deep. Any anywhere between 250 and 5,000 feet, but at night they can be found at shallower depths, relying on similar tactics to the anglerfish. Much like those weirdos, the viperfish lures its prey in with light-producing photophores before using those long needle-like teeth and hinged lower jaws to give them trauma no therapist will fix. In fact, these fish are such gifted predators, if left to do their thing in the wild, they'll survive for some 30 to 40 40 years. And as if you're not already creeped out enough by these fish, we have some more. According to estimates, the viper fish can move at a speed of two body lengths per second. I have no idea what the official measurement of that would be, but it sounds pretty frightening. Number 2. Giant Isopod like the viper fish, the giant isopod is not one species, but any of 20. Yeah, there are 20 species of large isopods that would count here, and all of them are pretty terrible. And that's me being nice about them. The giant isopod is mostly found in the cold waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. And in fact, some specimens have been credited as being the largest isopods in the world. Is that a confirmed fact? Eh, probably, honestly you'd be surprised how much of science is based on trust me bro. Giant isopods are also often compared to the common woodlouse, which is a freaky concept, but these two animals are related. So it's a big underwater woodlouse. Does that make anybody feel any less itchy and creeped out at all? I'm going to take a wild guess and say no. Obviously, professional and commercial fishers have absolutely no interest in the giant isopod. In fact, they hate them. The giant isopod has quite the reputation for attacking, destroying the fish that get caught in trawls, which is a surefire way to end up on the hit list of angry fishers all over the world. And that's never a fun place to be. Number 1. Rhizophysid Siphonophore as tempting as it is for me to claim that this creature is on the list purely because its name is horrible, that's not the case. It's mostly that, but not entirely. In fact, the Rhizophysid Siphonophore goes by an easier and more unique name. This is the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Okay, so it doesn't fly, but to be fair, doesn't everything look like it's flying when it's underwater? The Rhizophysid Siphonophore is a spaghetti-like deep-sea creature which which is interesting. According to the World Register of Marine Species, our planet's oceans are home to around 175 species of Siphonophore, and I would imagine absolutely zero of them are al dente. These creatures are known to emit light to attract and attack their prey, and some species have been known to light up red, which, when you think about it, would really just make them look more like spaghetti. Obviously, this thing is weird, and not just because some of you will almost definitely want to eat it, it's just one of the more unusual underwater animals on the planet. A transparent floater with spaghetti legs, you have to admit, a deep sea spaghetti monster with neon spaghetti sauce was not what you were expecting from this video, am I right? Which of these deep sea creatures would you least like to encounter? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff, showing up on screen right now. See you next time.